comrade over here, Kate uh, Hudson, she's a political activist and academic, <coughs> dedicated her life's work to the peace movement, and of course, she's the general secretary of the campaign for the nuclear disarmament. Kate. Thank you very much. evening. Earlier this month, Joe Biden warned that the world could face nuclear Armageddon if Putin uses a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine. Now, I don't always agree with Joe Biden, but this is absolutely no exaggeration. So wouldn't you think that this would lead to urgent action to scale back the confrontation? But no, there has been zero effort to move us back from that risk. On the contrary, we've seen governments on all sides actively blocking negotiations, including our own. They're piling on more threats, more militarization, pouring in more money, sending more people to slaughter. And they're not just making this war worse, they are making nuclear war possible. And more than that, they're making nuclear war probable. The latest example is happening as we speak. Last week, NATO began an ongoing round of nuclear war games. They are simulating the dropping of tactical B-61 nuclear bombs over Europe. Or as we could say, they are practicing the dropping of nuclear bombs on Europe. Now, of course, NATO presents these, routine as, these as routine exercises and says that they're unrelated to current events. Well, how can that assertion possibly be taken seriously? How can you have a major war in Europe and say it's just a coincidence, an unrelated fact that there are nuclear war games taking place? And they're also occurring alongside parallel Russian exercises. So it's hard to imagine worse timing. If there are concerns about nuclear Armageddon at the very highest levels of power, these exercises should have been called off. And this should have been an opportunity to send a message that the West won't contribute to escalating nuclear tensions. Instead, our leaders are systematically failing to reduce the risk. So let's just say something about these so-called tactical nuclear weapons that are being used in these war games. Because everyone's talking about them on the media, suddenly everyone is an expert about tactical nuclear weapons. And the impression that they like to give is that they are small bombs whose impact can be limited to a battlefield. They even call them battlefield nukes. But just consider this. The Hiroshima bomb was actually a small nuclear bomb in today's terms. Current nuclear weapons, even these supposedly battlefield orientated tactical nu nuclear weapons, even those are many, many times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. The bombs that are being used in the current war games over Europe have variable yields. They can send the bomb out there, alter the amount of explosion it's going to have, they have variable yield. The variable yield goes up to 20 times greater than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. That single bomb killed 200,000 people. A single B-61 bomb could kill millions. So when you hear people talking in a cavalier fashion, about using tactical nukes as if it's just the next stage in a war or that it won't lead to a devastating spiral of more and more nuclear use, then please put them straight. And if anyone thinks that this is just something that's happening in the further reaches of Europe, it doesn't really affect us, then think again. These very same weapons, the B-61, tactical nuclear weapons are being brought back to Britain by the United States. We got rid of them from Lake and Heath Air Base in 2008. And the reason given 
for their removal at the time was the intensity of protest at that base. <coughs> but now the US plans to send them back. These are the weapons that will be used in the Ukraine war. And we will be on the front line. Make no mistake about that. So please join our next protest at Lake and Heath Air Base. It's in Suffolk on Saturday the 19th of November. There's transport going from London, from Norwich and other cities. So if you want to go, if you want to know more about it, there's a card on your seats. You can also ask at our stall at the back about where the coaches are going from in London and you can also find the details on our website. <coughs> this is not something that we can look away from. This is absolutely, desperately dangerous. The reality of nuclear war means that everything has to be done to stop it happening. And of course, as other speakers have said, this means negotiation. Our government has to stop blocking negotiations. And their determination to inflict some kind of defeat on Russia, a military defeat on Russia, will lead to the death of us all. Of course, we're not alone in our determination for peace. Whether it's from states or movements, the global majority wants peace, not war. And there are powerful messages that should be acted on. In August, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned, he said, the world is one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation. His words must be a wake-up call to the leaders who pursue the policies that are driving us towards nuclear war. But more than that, they must also be a wake-up call to people across our movements and across our communities that are not yet taking action to stop these terrible dangers. We need urgently a renewed and powerful mobilization to stop this war. And again, as Gutter has said, he said, luck is not a strategy. Absolutely. We cannot rely on luck. We need to take action together, here and internationally, to bring about change, to stop this war, to ensure our survival. Thank you very much.